the client-server model. Every modern web application you use is built on a simple idea called the client-server model. Your browser is the client. Its job is to ask for things and display results. The server is another computer somewhere else whose job is to make decisions, fetch data, run logic, and send responses back. When you click a button, nothing magical happens locally. Your browser sends a request to the server, the server processes it, and then sends something back that tells the browser how to update the screen. Understanding this separation is critical, because a huge number of bugs come from assuming the browser can do things that only the server is allowed to do, like securely accessing databases or secrets. HTTP and REST fundamentals. That communication between the client and server usually happens over HTTP. HTTP is not a framework or a library, it's just a protocol, basically a shared language. The browser sends a request with a method like get or post, the server responds with a status code and some data. REST is simply a set of conventions layered on top of that. It's the idea that URLs represent resources and HTTP methods represent actions on those resources. When people say they're calling an API, they're really just sending structured HTTP messages and agreeing on what the responses mean. The browser rendering pipeline. Once the browser gets a response, it doesn't instantly appear on the screen. The browser goes through a rendering pipeline, it parses the HTML, calculates CSS styles, figures out layout, and then paints pixels to the screen. JavaScript can interrupt and change this process at any time. This is why performance matters so much. Heavy scripts, large layouts, or constant DOM changes force the browser to redo expensive work. If you understand that rendering is a process, not a switch, performance issues suddenly become much easier to reason about. State and data flow. As soon as something changes on the page, you're dealing with state. State is simply data that can change over time and affect what the user sees. A counter value, a logged in user, a loading flag, these are all state. The hardest part is not storing state, but controlling how it flows. When data moves in predictable directions and changes in obvious places, apps stay understandable. When state can be mutated from anywhere, bugs become almost impossible to track down. That's where separation of concerns comes in. This is the idea that different parts of your system should have clear responsibilities. Rendering logic should not be tangled with business rules, data fetching should not be mixed with UI layout. This is not about folder structures or buzzwords, it's about reducing blast radius. When concerns are separated, changing one thing doesn't silently break five others. Abstractions. Modern web development relies heavily on abstractions, and every abstraction comes with trade-offs. Frameworks make common tasks easier, but hide complexity. Libraries save time, but limit flexibility. The mistake many developers make is assuming abstractions eliminate complexity. They don't. They just relocate it. When something goes wrong beneath an abstraction, you're forced to understand what was hidden anyway. Good developers choose tools based on trade-offs, not hype. Caching and performance trade-offs. Caching is one of the most important and misunderstood trade-offs. Caching stores results so you don't have to recompute or refetch them every time. Browsers cache assets, servers cache responses, CDNs cache entire pages. This is why apps feel fast. But caching introduces a hard problem, invalidation. Knowing when cache data is no longer valid is tricky, and many real-world bugs are simply stale data being served at the wrong time. Data serialization and formats. To move data between systems, we serialize it. Serialization is the process of turning structured data into a format that can be sent over the network. JSON is the most common format because it's human-readable and widely supported, but it's not magical. It's a compromise. Understanding that data is flattened into text and reconstructed on the other side helps explain why data shapes matter so much. Authentication versus versus authorization. Security is another area where confusion is common, especially between authentication and authorization. Authentication answers the question, who are you? Authorization answers, what are you allowed to do? Logging in proves your identity. Permissions decide your access. Mixing these concepts leads to serious security bugs, because a user being authenticated does not automatically mean they should be allowed to perform every action. Environment, configuration, and secrets. Every real application runs in multiple environments, usually split into development, staging, and production. These re all different realities with different configurations. Environment variables exist so your code can stay the same while behavior changes depending on where it runs. Secrets like API keys and database passwords should never live in code because code gets shared, logged, and leaked. Many production failures come from misunderstanding environments rather than writing bad logic. If you truly understand these concepts, frameworks and tools become much easier to learn because you're no longer memorizing syntax. You're reasoning about systems. And that's the difference between someone who writes code and someone who actually understands how the web works. Once you truly understand these concepts, you will be ready to make awesome projects so you could secure your place in the rat race. And if you are looking to boost your CV with unique distinguishable projects, you can get 40% off today's sponsor, Code Crafters. They are the most rated GitHub repo, and that's for a good reason. Their platform gives you access to unique projects that will help you stand out from the competition without the clown shoes and nose. Want to build an HTTP or DM DNS server from scratch? Check! Hell, you can even craft your own version of Git. All while others are still struggling to center that annoying div in their to-do app. You can start some projects free of charge, and if you use my link in the description, you can get yourself a whopping 40% off, so hurry up. This was Codehead with yet another tech rant. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. Lights out!